Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. My name is Matt Sweeney and I am your student's US history teacher and or law to honors teacher. Up at the top, you've got my email. Feel free to contact me at any time if you have any questions or concerns and I'll get back to you as fast as I can. Uh, a little bit about the two classes. Um, in US history, we are covering uh, the, the topics from reconstruction, covering the errors from reconstruction up all the way until the 1980s. Um, and in Law 2, the first semester really focuses on uh, criminal investigation and uh, evidence, forensics, things like that. Uh, semester 2, we really dive into different areas of crime, start analyzing that. Um, uh, just because we are on distance learning right now does not mean that the course is going to be any less rigorous. Um, we are focusing on the essential standards, but we're still going to cover all of uh, as much content as, as we can. A little bit about my philosophy. Um, it's an election year and I'm a social studies teacher. So we're gonna nerd out on the election. In social studies classes, we're spoiled. We get to talk about the election. We get to talk about the process. We'll start breaking down ballots uh, as, we, as we get closer to the election. We'll take a look at the sample ballot and issues that are on there and unpack that. Similarly, I really value um, students um, talking about current events in class. Again, it's social studies class, we're spoiled, we get to talk about all of the goods and bads that's happening in our community, in our state, in our nation, and in the world. We'll talk about that uh, just about every day. I do my best to teach thematically, and the two themes that I will be working with this, uh, this year are being an American means different things. We had a discussion about it in my classes today. Um, and the second theme is rights aren't given, they're fought for. This is going to come up um, a lot in U.S. history and uh, occasionally in law too. Um, the idea about being an American, though, is fundamental to, to both classes. Um, lastly, uh, I am going to focus a lot on the role of race and race relations in both U.S. history and in law too. Um, race plays uh, a huge role in the foundation of our country and impacts our criminal justice system greatly. It's important that we uh, acknowledge that openly and make room to discuss that in class. I operate under the these five mutual expectations. I think it's only right and fair that if I'm asking students to, to hold these true, that they should be able to, to hold me accountable to them as well. Um, in terms of students being ready to teach something, it's my view that each student has a, a unique story um, that's shaped their identity uh, up to this point. And so they're going to be able to contribute um, to class in discussions um, and, and teach us something new, maybe from a different perspective. The last two are critically important during distance learning. Um, with all of the, the focus on technology, glitches and issues are going to be inevitable. It's important that we all remain positive uh, and patient and take all this in stride. Lastly, it is imperative that students advocate for themselves. Uh, as a teacher uh, on Zoom now, I don't have these nonverbal cues that let me know that a student is is struggling with something or a little confused or maybe a student is shy and doesn't want to speak up in front of the whole Zoom class. Um, I encourage you to talk with your students about being a self-advocate and, and, and get your students to send those messages on Canvas. Send me an email and uh, I'll get back to them and offer further clarification. If, some, if one student is confused, chances are other kids are. Um, and the, the sooner I know about it, the, the better I can fix it, the sooner I can fix it. As far as uh, live instruction, what that's going to look like, I'm going to do my best to replicate what uh, an in-person uh, class with me is it would be like I'm going to check in with your kids uh, I asked them today to rate on a scale of one to five how they're doing and, and they put their hands up um, mostly threes and fours today that they were you know they were feeling good they were ready to go after that check-in I'm going to go over uh, a daily agenda it's what we're going to accomplish that day when we're meeting live um, some tools that might be used during a synchronous lesson uh, would be a breakout room get students into a group with their, their classmates and their colleagues to start discussing a topic. Um, maybe there's a prompt, maybe there is an article uh, or 
textbook section that they were supposed to read, they can start to unpack that together. Um, maybe if I'm giving a reading assignment or a primary source or an article for either class uh, and I want to hold students accountable, uh, I might give a, a short, brief check-in quiz that's used to, to gauge their comprehension as well as um, let me know where they are if they got this assignment or if it's something that we need to go over uh, again as a bigger class. In terms of asynchronous work and homework, um, that may be a longer lecture. That way uh, students can view that on their own time and I can reserve synchronous classes to be a little bit more interactive. Uh, maybe there's a great documentary on a topic in U.S. history. Maybe there's a, a, a long deep dive news um, clip about uh, something in law too. Maybe there's a primary source and some comprehension questions. Um, Canvas allows us to create virtual discussion boards where on a Tuesday I might ask a student to respond to an initial prompt and then on Thursday or by Thursday respond to a couple colleagues and simulate a virtual discussion. This also helps prep for uh, work that might be done later at the university level. Any homework that is assigned will absolutely adhere to the board policy um, and you can guarantee that any work that is assigned to be completed outside of a synchronous classroom will connect to that synchronous classroom. That will be our hook to get us back in, in that live room. Like so much of what's happening with distance learning, uh, things are, are, are works in progress. This is especially true for assessments. Um, we still need to hold kids accountable and we still need to have sort of unit end assessments, but the traditional multiple choice, fill in the blank, short answer tests don't really lend themselves well to a distance learning environment. With that in mind, um, my colleagues and I are working on ways to better assess kids over distance learning. That might mean an individual or a group project. Maybe that is a more formal writing assignment or an essay. Um, maybe that is something else that, that is going to come up that we're working on. We're trying to be creative. We're trying to think outside the box and we're trying to hold kids accountable. Um, with that accountability in mind, academic integrity is of the utmost importance to me, whether in face to face uh, learning environments or distance learning. I would encourage you to go over the academic honesty policy with your students. It's something that I value. Uh, it's something that I take seriously, and it's something that is critical during uh, distance learning. With that in mind also, I'm looking to you all as partners. I've been telling classes since we started meeting last week, we are all in this together. That includes you, parents and guardians. On Mondays, I strongly encourage you to, to get your students to follow the bell schedule. It's 40 minute chunks with five minute breaks in between. Uh, and when students are meeting synchronously Tuesdays through Fridays, uh, those 15 minute passing periods are really great opportunities to get students to step away from their computer. Uh, maybe go outside, um, maybe hang out with the dog for a minute, um, get some water, eat some food. It's important that we take a break from Zoom. Zoom fatigue is totally real, um, and these screen breaks are gonna be super important. I've got my trusty water bottle with me anytime I'm on Zoom. Stay hydrated, it keeps us awake. Uh, and once again, I need to reiterate, get your students to, to speak up early and often if an issue arises, um, and we can work to, to rectify that, to offer up more information whatever it is, um, but we can't know there's a problem unless, you're, unless your students are telling their teachers what's going on. Once again, here's my contact information. Please send me an email with any questions or concerns that you might have. I look forward to hearing from you. I am beyond excited to be back at work and in school, even if it is distance learning. Um, we're in for a year. Go Mats!